<laughs> okay. Once again, how many of you have heard of the ARCS model? Okay, how many of you have never heard of it? It's just a complete... Okay, so half and half. Um, I think this will be maybe a review for some of you who have heard of it before, maybe something new you can think about for the others. And it's, I want to do this to be very interactive. So as we're going along, if you have any ideas, if it sparks an idea of something that's worked for you in the classroom, you know, just you know, speak up and let's maybe get, learn from each other because I'm hoping to get some ideas from you too. Okay. <coughs> there are four steps, and I've given you all a handout that has the four um, on, the, on those first and second sheets there. And we'll be talking about face-to-face -face classes, but also online or hybrid. How many of you do any online classes, pure online? Okay, and how many do hybrids or web-enhanced? And so web enhanced. Okay, so I, I want to talk about both ways. I think the challenge is a little bit greater for pure online classes. You know, because when you're face to face, you can see what's going on. Are they interested? Are they motivated? Are they into it? Whereas where they're at home and they're doing stuff, you don't know if they have the TV going, if they've got five kids, what's going on. So you're trying to grab them in that way. So that's a little bit greater challenge, I think. Um, so we're going to look at the the practical methods of using this model for face-to-face -face and online, and also I want you to add your own ideas. Okay, so the first one is how to gain <laughs> well, no, the prize is one way. <laughs> According to Keller, there are two ways. Perceptual arousal, using surprise or uncertainty, novel, surprising things you can do to the classroom. And then also by maybe asking a, a question or giving a challenge to the class. Have any of you ever used either one of these things to get attention? You held your head. What did you do, Bobby? That was when I was developing a class. Oh, yeah? I was I'm still doing for the instructors. And, uh, I'm, I'm coming up with uh, ideas where, I'm not going to give away, but I'm trying to come up with ideas where um, the instructors have to go out on the website and find and things. Find some stuff and then come back and report it. That's a good idea. You said you do it also? Who else raised your hand? Who else raised their hand? Did you raise your hand? You? I shook my head a little bit. Well, what was yours? Me? Oh, well, I don't know. I'm very loud, so. <laughs> You're loud, so it gets attention. <laughs> um, no, and I, I jump around and they like it, so I don't know. Yeah. 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 I think that's good, you know. To me, it's much more interesting for the instructor to move around the classroom as opposed to standing behind, glued to behind a podium. That makes a difference. Inflection of voice and, like you said, maybe being loud, being quiet, different things like that as opposed to a monotone voice. Y'all didn't raise your hand on the side. Am I doing any attention getting things? Yes. What do you? I'm just like right now. I know I do some of those things. It might be sometimes using, you know, starting with a YouTube video or something. Right. YouTube is a great tool because they all love that. Anything you can do with something like that. I use humor, humor to get attention a lot of times, but it's dangerous because some of them like it, some of them don't. Some don't. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, there's some other methods for using uh, it. You can get attention. Um, active participation, games, role playing, hands on activities, um, dividing them up to teams, you know, giving awards for whoever gets the most answers right, things like that. Um, using a variety of teaching styles. You mentioned, you know, videos, okay. Um, I like to get them in groups, like maybe five groups in the class and give them each a project and they present their project and just, you know, a 10 minute long exercise. Um, Inquiry, again, like you said, and, and I like your idea of finding something on the web, but anything else you can do, you know, some kind of a question, what do you think about this, and make them find it in the book, and whoever can find the answer. Humor, which is good, but if it can be distracting, you know, sometimes, you have to be kind of careful with that one. Playing the devil's advocate, like, uh, I, I teach health classes, and um, they're cracking down now on tobacco usage, mo mobility, getting ready to say no smoking anywhere. Well, you know, fast food, the fast food industry is pretty harmful as well. So I'll ask a question, what do you think that fast food should be illegal? You know, well, yes or no, what do you think? And there there would be a debate back and forth on that. So I can find a way to, something they all enjoy, fast food, and how I can make this interesting. How does it apply to them? Um, I use a lot of personal stories. You know, I've, I have a lot of personal stories I can bring to class. And they, you know, if someone takes me more than once, I kind of feel sorry for them. They might hear the same story twice. But, you know, I use stories like, my father died of colon cancer and how he could have avoided dying at the age of 59. You know, things like that that brings it home personal and they can see why I, I, you know, I have a vested interest and why this is a passion for me. So bringing my passion to it helps. Has anybody else got any, any things here that work for you? Any, any of these 
things bring an idea to your head that something you've done, yell it out if it has. No? I think there's just a structure of the class. If there's a variety in, if you keep them for, if you have an hour and a half or a night class, a night class, then there are things that you do that are different. They know what that structure is, but it, it differs. Mm -hmm. And some of it is discussion, some of it is testing, uh, some of it is lecture, and then others is hands-on putting it into practice. Right. Knowing that it's divided up that way so they they're really not working on any one part of that long enough to get bored. Bored. You know, that's, that's on the nose, I think that's it. Have, when y'all were in college, how many of you took a class or a lot of classes where the teacher lectured the entire time with nothing else, just lecture? Yeah. And, and it's just brutal. You know, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person, I'm sitting here doing this number, you know, and it's just brutal. So I try to avoid that. I think that's really good. For the online classes, here's something I do. Um, this is in the first chapter. We're going to talk about health, and you know, some people are there, oh, they're interested, but some people are taking it because they have to have the credit. So this is an attention getter I have in the very first content section of the first chapter of the book, How to Die in 10 Easy Steps, using humor a little bit, using the devil's advocate a little bit, just thinking about things I can do that will kind of, oh, I do that, oh, no, you know, oh, I'll do that too, and maybe I can learn from this class. So um, just one kind of fun way. To maintain tension. So we gained attention. We got their attention, but now we're losing it. They have short, short attention spans. They, you know, this generation especially, um, you've got to keep it going fast. So here's some ideas of things. I think the first one is the best. Make sure you're not just giving them busy work. Why? You look at all your objectives and the work you're giving them that go along with the objectives. Is it going to be something that's meaningful or is it just going to keep them busy? You know, that they know, they know this is, this is stupid. Why are we doing this? You don't want, we don't ever ask that. Why are we doing this? You know, because it's usually you don't have a reason for it. And just anticipate problems and challenges and plan for them. Again, identify your key concepts and think about how, what are you going to do to make that interesting other than just standing up here and talking about it? What can I do to bring this home to them? Um, make it active, not passive. And we think we've, we're kind of mentioned that again, how we do, you know, back and forth asking questions. What do you think? And doing things in groups and hands-on. And expect them to participate. I mean, I, I really, my pet peeve is a person in the back of the room who's sitting there won't participate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring them forth. We're going we're gonna, to, we're gonna, they're going to be brought out of that shell one way or another. I do notice I love web enhanced and hybrid classes because I find that the students who talk the most in class a lot of times are not the ones who discuss the most online. You know, sometimes your quiet students will be in the discussion boards online more they're going to town. You can't get a word out of them in class. So it's nice to have a variety of ways to reach them because some people are shy when it comes to actually talking, but they are very, you know, very talkative on the on boards. Uh, I'm trying to make them sound much more interesting and um, I guess that's probably all of our biggest challenge. And you know, what's interesting to us may not be interesting to a 19-year-old. So we have to think about what's going to be, you know, what they're going to like. Theoretical and everyday life knowledge. What's the difference? You know, well, in theory, here is what you know, blah blah blah. Well, okay. So now let's think about current events. Think about what you're doing every day. How does this relate to you? And then. Um, there are different types of ways to remember information. Um, um, neural pathways in your brain. And if you only hear information, you're, you're going to remember it one way. But if you say it out loud, you'll remember another way. If you read it, you'll remember another way. If you write it, you'll remember another way. So different ways to get the information to the neural pathways. So when they're taking the test, they'll remember, oh yeah, I said that out loud in class, or I wrote about that. They'll remember it more. So not only does that gain attention, it helps them remember the information.